Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, uh, Sam Rochel from Auburn University. And today I'm excited to be joined by Dr. Ash Stanavallen uh, coming to us from uh, Canada today. Uh, nice to meet you, Ash. Good to have you on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's nice to meet you, too. Yeah, this is uh, w- one of the first times we really uh, had an opportunity to have an in-depth conversation. So, so really looking forward to it. Um, just to help everyone get to know you, can you give us a little bit about uh, your background and how you got to where you are now? Sure. Um, so I went to the University of Guelph. So it's a school in Ontario, if everyone knows where that is. Um, I did my undergrad there, thought I wanted to be a vet, which I feel like is a pretty common you know, theory when you're from the city. And then I started doing small research projects and realized I loved the research and I've stalked aspect of it. Um, so then I started doing my master's in poultry nutrition and then just kind of kept going with it, did a, some work with industry partners, and then that turned into a large PhD uh, experiment. Um, and then I just finished up in January and started working for a small feed mill in southwestern Ontario. So. Great. Congratulations. How has the Thank transition you. been from uh, graduate school into a, a practicing nutritionist? Uh, it's very exciting. Um, it's definitely, I've realized the fundamentals from grad school are amazing and it's great, but nothing in the research barn works as perfect <laughs> out in the, when you're right. out on a farm. Right. But it's great. It's, you know, that research mindset lets you ask the questions. It makes you really inquisitive. And I think that's really important when you get out to those farms and you're asking the right questions and asking a lot of questions Uh, so that part has really stuck with me but yeah yeah very good no i bet that's exciting and i wish you uh, all the luck in as you continue to transition into that that role (laughs) thank you you bet uh well hey i'm excited to talk to you about uh, the research we're going to discuss today because uh we have a unique opportunity to talk about some breeder research which is what you've been involved in um you know just due to the nature of the the timeline and the expense and the facilities required for boiler breeder research we don't see much of that uh, going on uh, but fortunately you were able to to do uh, some neat projects there so look forward to hearing about that so tell us a little bit about uh, the project we're going to discuss today yeah, so we'll kind of cover the project um, that expanded over my master's and my PhD, and it was basically trying to feed broiler breeders like different forms of omega-3 fatty acids over their life and saw, trying to see if we could increase broiler health, response to coxie challenges, um, just see how we affect uh, the offspring. So a little bit about right. epigenetics, some nutrition. Yeah, very good. Uh, and, and which particular fatty acids were you looking at? So we used two farms. We used microalgae to try and get that DHA supplementation. And then we used uh, ground flaxseed to get some ALA. And so okay. that was a, a little bit of practicality. With, we wanted to make it industry applicable. So being conscious of costs as well. So is it better to use flax and still get the same results? So right. that was the yeah. thought process behind that. And so I was looking at a, at a summary of one of your projects, and you were able to feed uh, pullets all the way through uh, process broilers, right? Yeah, yeah. It was a cool project. It was like 70 weeks long. <laughs> so spent a lot of, like you said, breeder research, I think, is quite overlooked because of the length of time you have to commit to it. But yeah, so we got um, breeder pullets. We reared them up until 64 weeks, and then... The set and hatched progeny at four different time points, and that was to see the maternal age effect because you know we know as breeders get older, they're not as productive. We see a little bit more health challenges in the broilers, but you know, with us having to use every egg we can get our hands on, currently, uh, it seemed like very applicable. Yeah, yeah. In that sense, yeah. very yeah. good. So did you see uh, any differences in the response um, when you're looking at an uh, older breeder versus a younger breeder in your dietary treatments? Yeah, so it's like the um, older breeders benefited more from the use of omega-3s, and I we kind of attributed that to, you know, we expect health issues in older breeders. 
Um, so we expect that those broilers to maybe come with a little bit of E. coli, a little bit um, poor skeletal formation. So we did find that the use of omega-3s really seemed to be most helpful in the older birds. Okay. And was that more on egg production or fertility or both? Uh, so fertility, for sure. Um, we did feed the roosters the same omega-3 diet. So that was another piece that I think retrospectively I would have looked into more in terms of where we, who were we affecting on the parental side of it. Was it because there is some research around sperm motility in roosters with omega-3? Um, so that part... I wish we had looked into a little bit more, but we also found that the broilers responded um, better to their coxie challenge from older breeders who are fed omega. So, yeah, yeah, it was cool. On the on the coxie response, um, you're basing that mainly on the performance, how their performance rebounded from the challenge, or or how did you evaluate that? So we did two challenges. We did a high dose challenge um, to see the acute response and we did lesion scoring uh, immunoglobulin response on that end and then we did a low dose as well for the rest of the birds to kind of create would be a subclinical challenge that you would see out on farms so we kind of got the full picture that way and we got the how do we respond acutely and then how do we respond to that subclinical can we bounce back so a combination Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Very good. And then I saw from your uh, summary that you saw even some processing effects, I think, maybe for the ALA at the very end of, of this very long trial. Yeah. So that was kind of neat. And honestly, in my, I wasn't really expecting to see a difference in breast yield or carcass quality. Um, we kind of attributed that to the response to coxie. So they were the subclinically challenged ones who are fed ALA seem to be able to bounce back a little bit better. So that was kind of what we attributed that aspect to. But it was really cool to see. Yeah. Very neat. And so, you know, you mentioned the kind of thinking about this from an epigenetic standpoint. Um, do you think that when you look at, you know, different combinations in the chicks versus uh, in the breeders, do you think that you saw any uh, differential responses in the way that uh, the the chicks responded to the to the omega threes based on what the the hen was fed? Yeah, so we um, separated out the data for like a manuscript that we're working on because there were I think over fifteen treatments that we were working with, and then we kind of narrowed it down to okay, what if we just fed the mothers and didn't feed the offspring uh, and we noticed that we still kind of saw that same response in terms of improving chick response to co uh, coxie and also growth performance and skeletal formation was a big one I know there's a lot of research around omega-3s and how it affects bone development and with fast growing broilers that was so once we separated out that data, we did see that there was a maternal influence on it. Okay. So, yeah. Very yeah, good. It was cool. It was cool. And, you know, I think omega-3s are a great one to look at in terms of greater nutrition because eggs are so unique where all that nutrient that you pack in an egg is all that chick is dependent on to grow. So we can really quantify what we're putting in and how that's being absorbed and taken out so yeah yeah great all right well thanks again and uh thanks to you all for uh joining us um on on the poultry nutrition black belt uh, podcast and look forward to uh seeing you on the next one thank you mm -hmm.